I've come all the way from Canada to talk to you about cleansing and detoxification, but I wanted to first talk about what got me in the industry. And this quote sums it up perfectly. So I found that every single successful person I've ever spoken to had a turning point, and the turning point was where they made a clear, specific, and unequivocal decision that they were not going to leave like this anymore. So some people make that decision at 15, some at 50, and some never make it at all. And for me, it happened when I was very sick. I was tired all the time. I was not remembering things very well. I had very bad sugar cravings. I was sick all the time, and the doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And a friend of mine said, you've got candida. And I thought, well, that's pretty. What's that? It's an overgrowth of yeast in the body, and it's not very pretty. And it's what made me very, very sick. So once I learned what that was, then I went back to school and I became a registered holistic nutritionist. So I've been doing that for over 12 years and I work for a detoxification company and I've been doing that for 11 years. So a lot of my stories are my own personal experience as well as the things I've read and researched over the years and the things that I've written over the years. So I'd like to share some of that with you tonight. to these types of things, a lot of to-do lists. You've got more, more things to do than you have hours in the day to do them. Or maybe you've got long hours that you're working. The fact that you've all worked today and now you're here tonight, that's a very, very long day. And I think a lot of us are just doing that on a very regular basis. And also we're eating nutrient depleted foods. So our soil is just, it doesn't have the same nutrient density that we used to have maybe 40, 50 years ago. Maybe when our parents and our grandparents were eating natural food, they were getting more nutrients from their soil. And perhaps we're just not eating good fruits and vegetables anymore. Maybe we're going out for fast food and fried foods and sugary foods and processed foods that aren't so good for us. Or we're eating breakfast on the go, or we're not eating breakfast at all. And I think a lot of people might skip breakfast in the morning, but it's a very, very important meal in the day. It breaks that fast between when you go to sleep and when you wake up. So it's important to have a good breakfast every single day. And pollution. We are all exposed to pollution, and I've really noticed it a lot since I've been here because my hotel, my room is on the 22nd floor. So I see a lot of pollution out there. So you cannot you can't escape it. You live and breathe in this society, so you're living and breathing these toxins every day. And dehydration is also a big problem. If you're constantly and chronically dehydrated, you're not getting rid of the toxins that your body is accumulating. So dehydration is very, very uh, destructive to all of your joints. You're not going to get rid of those toxins properly. And I think most people might be in a state of dehydration. So one of the ways that you can tell if you're dehydrated, it's very simple, just pinch the top of your hand. And if the skin goes back really quickly, then good hydration. If it takes a long time to start going back down, it's a sign of dehydration. So it's an easy one to figure out. So drinking water is really, really important. So maybe we're always plugged in. How many people reach for their phone in the morning before they even get out of bed to go to the washroom? Most hands should be going up. I would think most people do that. So one of the things that you can do is just put your, your phone away from your bed. Put it in another room so you're not tempted to reach for your phone and always be plugged in all the time and always checking your messages all the time. One of the rules that I have in my house is when I get home, I turn the phone on silent, I put it in another room. So I, I don't think about it. If someone needs to contact me, they'll phone me on the home line. But for the most part, it's out of sight, out of mind, that I'm spending good quality time with my husband and my cat. I don't have a child, I have a cat. <laughs> so, um, so it allows me to have that good personal time with them. I'm, I'm sharing my time, which is precious, to each other. So that's one of the things that, that I notice that when I'm out in restaurants, I'm sure all of you know where I'm going with this, that people are sitting at a table, they're not looking at each other. 
They're looking at their phone, right? Yeah. So they're not really spending quality time together. And then processed foods. A lot of us are eating processed foods and we're not having enough time or making the time to make our own nutritious food. So we're eating on the go. We're eating easy, boxed, packaged, processed foods which have a lot of chemicals in them. So when you're in the grocery store, if you shop on the outsides of the aisles, that's where the fresh fruits and the fresh vegetables are, that's where the meat is, those are the proper foods that we should be eating. The middles of the aisles, when you look at those packages, if you cannot pronounce it, it shouldn't be in your body. <laughs> that's one of the things my teacher taught me and I will never forget it. And I've given this example last Two, two sessions I did at the Twinkie. Do you guys know what a Twinkie is? It's like a cake, and it's, it's, in the, it's in North America, and it's like a round little white cake, and in the middle is a cream. And when that cake was first made, like probably in the 50s, there were only about eight ingredients, and now there's over 35. And most of it are preservatives, so that it has a shelf-stable life of Lord knows how long it would be. But that's so that it can sit on the shelf longer. And a lot of the products that we're eating in those packaged foods have a lot of those chemicals in them. So we're exposing ourselves to these chemicals on a regular basis. Now beauty chemicals, this is a big one. And I've been to a couple of your malls lately. <laughs> and I walk through and there are perfumes and makeups everywhere. This is an industry that is not regulated. So there are a lot of chemicals and toxins in perfumes, in makeup, there's lead in lipstick, so there's things that we might not be aware of. And those are very toxic to our bodies and they can actually interfere with our hormones. So hormone disruptors or what's called xenoestrogens or fake estrogens. And so that's becoming more and more prevalent. So natural products, there are natural products out there that you can use on your body. So when, when we wake up in the morning, ladies, think about this for a second. You go into the bathroom, you have a shower, you put on body wash, then you get out, you put on lotion, maybe put on a face cream, and then you put something in your hair, and then you put makeup on, and then you put hairspray on. Okay, that's before you even get out of the washroom every day. And that's happening on an ongoing basis, and you're accumulating those toxins in your body. So people will still do that, but what do you do about it? You cleanse. So it's not all bad, there's always hope at the end. <laughs> household chemicals, this is another big one, using toxic household chemicals. There are studies that show that there are more toxins inside your home than outside your home. So that would be things like uh, flame retardant on your carpets and on your, um, on your couches, or the chemicals that we're using to clean our homes. So there's natural chemicals you can use, natural products, I should say, I wouldn't even say chemicals, there's natural products you can use, and there's things like vinegar and baking soda, which I know my grandmother used for years, and that's not toxic to the body. So there are alternatives, we can avoid those things. And another thing we can do to clean out the air in our homes, and instead of using some smelly little plug-in that you put in the wall, plants. Plants are very important, they help to clean out the air. So things like, um, uh, spider plants are very, very good for your home. They clean the air for you. So too much caffeine. I think, I see a lot of smiles happening right now. <laughs> a lot of people drinking a lot of caffeine and it can be toxic to your body. So you should probably look at how much you're drinking in a day and maybe cut back. There are, are good forms of, uh, of caffeine or some that are better than others. And then there's, of course, herbal teas. They're great, and they're not caffeinated, and a lot of herbal teas have medicinal properties to them. So these are alternatives that you can do to maybe the takeout coffee that you happen to be doing every day. Uh, insomnia. This is a big problem in today's society, and a lot of the problem is because we are so connected to our devices before we go to sleep. So what's happening is we're looking at our phones, our brains are going, and there's also a blue spectrum light that stimulates the brain. So if you guys have an iPhone, something that I have on my phone, in the newest operating system, they have um, 
They have something, let me just look at it here really quick. It's something that you can, it's called night shift, and it's right here. And you can turn it on. And what that does is it's going to take away the blue spectrum. So it looks kind of orange. It's not going to stimulate your brain. And on your computer, you can use a program called Flux, F-L-U-X. And you can download that, and you can set a time, let's say, 7 at night until 7 in the morning. So if you are on your computer or your iPhone or something, then you're not going to have the brain stimulated before you go to sleep. But other things that you can do, is, whoa. <laughs> well, other things that you can do is not hear that and freak out. Um, another thing that you can do is to just deep breathe, meditation, yoga, things that are going to relax you before you go to sleep and just get your body prepared for rest. So ideally, this is how we should be living. So families together, they're growing their own food, you don't see any cell phones. This is great, this is how we should be living. But this is how we are actually living, right? Nobody's paying attention to each other or the child who's eating her chicken McNuggets, okay? So this is a lifestyle that, that leads us to not be connected to each other, to be a little more sedentary, um, to not be mindful of what we're doing and what we're feeding our children. So the question isn't whether you are toxic, it's how toxic are you? I think everybody in this room is toxic to some degree, including myself. I have been cleansing for over 11 years. I still do it every single year. And every single time I cleanse, I find I get more energy. My bowel movements are more regular. I'm sleeping better. So these are all really good things that I still do on an ongoing basis because I live in a big city like Toronto. So there's toxins I'm exposed to all the time in there. Even though I eat organic almost exclusively, I still do my best. All of my, um, my body products are natural, but I still deal with toxins on a regular basis. <coughs> so in the last 50 years, the global production of toxins and chemicals has escalated to over 80,000 chemicals. So these are things that were not even present 50 years ago. So there are about 300 to 500 chemicals in the average person's body that weren't there before 1920. And they found this by testing the blood so they could see multiple different toxins. And here's a very scary statistic, not statistic even, but it's very scary that they test the umbilical fluid of unborn babies, babies who have not even taken their first breath, and they're finding over 200 chemicals. They're getting it from the mother. So if a mother wants, you cannot cleanse while you're breastfeeding or while you're pregnant because the toxins are gonna to go into the baby, so you don't wanna do that. But if you want to get pregnant, you should cleanse and then wait three months to get the herbs out of your body. You don't want any leftovers. Let the herbs get out of your body and then you can try getting pregnant. So you're gonna reduce the toxic load on the baby, okay? That was very scary. When I first heard that, I was sitting in an audience like this and the woman was on stage and I actually started crying. It's very, very sad to think about that. So there are more than 75,000 synthetic chemicals on the market today and you see them in a lot of the food that we eat, the cosmetics we're using, the perfumes we're using. So there's things that we're exposed to. Teflon, when you're using a, a frying pan. These things, I was just reading an article yesterday about they're finding um, particles, the Teflon particles are actually leaching into food and they're ending up in people's bodies. So it's, it's just a constant ongoing thing. So cleansing, cleansing is important. Now according to some reports at death, the human body decomposes more slowly today than just 30 years ago. And think back to the Twinkie. That's why there's a lot more preservatives in our food nowadays than there ever has been. So we're decomposing slow, most, more slowly. So how are we exposed to these toxins? The first one could be the plastics that were, you know, plastic bottle even. So there's something in here called BPA. There's also other chemicals called phthalates. And these, these ingredients in particular can interfere with hormones. And so 
BPA has been linked to things like breast cancer. So breast cancer is very much driven by estrogen. So when you have fake estrogen in the body or xenoestrogens, what happens is the body, then what does it do with the rest of the estrogen? Now it has too much, and that's when it starts developing things like breast cancer. The other thing that we could get it through is our cosmetics, as I mentioned, in our household products, in our food, and also in our air and water exposure. So we can't escape it. Again, this sounds a bit depressing right now, but it gets better, I promise. So there's two ways toxicity occurs, and the first one is endotoxins. Endotoxins happen inside our bodies. Our body is manufacturing the toxins. It's a byproduct of metabolism, but also it could be caused by things like impaired digestion. So people are not breaking down their foods properly, and then you have chemicals and toxins that are left over. It's creating gas and bloating, and then you're getting distended, and then you're getting heartburn and so there's a lot of different symptoms that might tell you that you're not digesting your foods properly. And of course the bacteria, if you've got any parasites in there, they give off toxins too. So impaired digestion is, is the first start. And then these digestive toxins, undigested proteins, undigested carbohydrates. Undigested carbohydrates feed bad bacteria. Undigested proteins can leak into the bloodstream and cause your body to start attacking. And then you get autoimmune disorders, you get allergies, these types of things. Now candida and parasites is a big one. And this is what brings me into this industry is candida and parasites. I have both of them. And they caused a lot of damage to my intestinal tract. They caused me to be very, very sick. I was tired all the time. Cravings were off the charts. I, I just needed sweet stuff all the time. And once I got rid of the candida parasites, I felt so much better. And I didn't crave those things anymore. And my brain started becoming clear. And I was starting to digest my foods better. So the bacteria that's in our body can start to overgrow when there's an imbalance. And then that leads to something called leaky gut. And leaky gut is actually when you have holes in your intestinal tract. So think of the intestinal tract like a screen on a door. It lets the good air in and it keeps the bad bugs out. So in our bodies, it lets good digested nutrients into the bloodstream and then it keeps the bad pathogens out. So things like undigested proteins, the candida, the parasites, all those things, it's gonna keep it in the digestive tract and then you can eliminate it. But what happens when there's holes in there? then those, all of those toxins are free-flowing into the bloodstream, and then it can go anywhere in the body. So we could all have leaky gut and show the symptoms differently because those toxins are gonna to go to the areas of greatest weakness. But one of the biggest signs of leaky gut is food allergies and food sensitivities. So every time you eat a certain food, you might break out in a rash, or you could get stuffy nose, or there's some sort of sign that you're having issues with that food. So you should eliminate the food, heal the gut, and then you can try reintroducing the food again and see if it's still causing a problem. Still causing a problem, you have to avoid it. But most of the time, once you heal the damage, then you can start eating those foods again. For me, it was tomatoes. But I had to get rid of the parasites, heal the gut, and then start reintroducing those foods again. So that's leaky gut. And then the last one, if we've got leaky gut, and our body is constantly fighting what's getting into the bloodstream, you can get autoimmune disorders. So all of these things would be like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, those are all inflammatory diseases that could be caused by these toxins and these undigested proteins in your body and the body's just constantly attacking. And the next one, the one that we're familiar with, is exotoxins. They come from outside of the body. So that would be things like those chemical toxins, air pollution, <coughs> the plastics or xenoestrogens, as I mentioned, as well as heavy metals. And heavy metals can be from maybe a mercury amalgams in your fillings, if you happen to have fillings, <coughs> or the lead in the lipstick I was mentioning. Um, and so there's, there's quite a few heavy metals that we're exposed to that we might not be aware of. So again, cleansing and supporting the body through a cleansing process 
is important to get rid of these toxins. And that's where spirulina really, really helps too. Spirulina is one of those ingredients that helps to soak up these toxins and neutralize these toxins, which is why it's such a good ingredient. So next we're gonna talk about the liver, the gut, and the brain. And there's a very big connection between the three. So the liver is the vital filtration system. It does over 500 functions in the body. It's probably your hardest working organ. It makes hormones, it detoxes hormones, it makes cholesterol, it filters absolutely everything. Whether you eat it, breathe it, or drink it, it goes through the liver. So it's a very, very hard working organ and we need to support it on an ongoing basis. <coughs> Now the next we have the brain, of course, that's our central nervous system. That's the, the powerhouse that, that gets that central nervous system going. And there's a connection between the gut and the, and the brain. And it's, it's a, a blood-brain barrier thing. So things that come up through the... the into the brain. If there's, if there's leaky brain, which I'll talk about shortly, um, then you have toxins that are passing from the gut into the brain and causing things like depression or Alzheimer's or dementia. All these things could be related to this leaky brain that I'm going to talk about later. And of course the gut. The gut is absolutely integral to our immune system. 80% of our immune system is in our gut. So our gut needs to be balanced. To have a strong, healthy immune system, you need to have a strong, healthy gut. <coughs> so for the liver, we might have hormone imbalance, so an increase of hormone imbalance. So we've got things like excess cortisol, excess estrogen. And in today's very stressful society, I think a lot of people are producing more, more um, uh, cortisol than ever before. And the way you can tell is you start gaining weight around the middle here. That's one of the signs when you're trying to lose weight, you just can't do it. And it happened to me, my father passed. I was taking care of my dad and I was putting on weight like crazy. Even though I wasn't eating very much and I was trying to relax and do everything that I would normally do, the stress itself just did me in. And I think I put on about 10 pounds. So. It was, it was frustrating, <laughs> but I realized what it was, and then I went back to take care of my liver. So cholesterol, the liver makes 80% of your cholesterol. So when you have elevated cholesterol, there's something going, going on in your liver. So taking care of your liver is key to helping to deal with things like high cholesterol. Now cholesterol also makes your hormones. So it may, it's, in, it's involved in all of your hormone production. So cholesterol's not necessarily a bad thing. It's got a very important job in your body. So it makes those hormones, but it also is involved with inflammation. When there's inflammation in your body, what cholesterol does is it goes to the site where the inflammation is and tries to soothe it, tries to smooth it down. Now the problem is when we've got too much of the uh, LDL, the, the low density lipoprotein, where they're very, very small, those particles can get into the bloodstream and that's when you start getting you know, issues with your arteries. So cholesterol is just telling you, high cholesterol is just saying, there's inflammation in the body, we need to deal with that. So blaming cholesterol you know, for a heart attack is kind of like blaming a fireman for being out of fire. He's there to put out the fire, right? So cholesterol is there to deal with the problem, but you've ended up you know, with a heart condition. So signs and symptoms of, of liver dysfunction would be things like headaches, skin problems, fatigue, things that people might not relate to being a liver issue. So these are all things that start looking at you know, your symptoms and your signs. Start paying attention to what your body is trying to tell you. And if you're getting these headaches and skin problems and fatigue and you're not digesting your foods properly and you're high cholesterol and it goes on and on, if all of these are happening to you, then you might have an issue with your liver. So cleansing the liver is very important. Now, a decreased metabolism happens when your liver is out of balance because your liver is your largest fat burning organ. 
So how many people knew that? Most people are running it off on a treadmill or they're changing their diet or something like that. When in fact, maybe it's their liver's not working properly. So again, cleansing the liver. And I find that time and time again, people will do a cleanse and they'll lose weight. It may not always be true weight loss. It could be waste loss. So they might be losing um, maybe undigested food or it could be excess water. So these things could happen. But again, a lot of people find that they can hit their next plateau of their goal weight when they do a cleanse because now their body's working more efficiently. Now the metabolism is working better as well. Increased inflammation is also a sign that something's going on in the liver and there's a C-reactive protein that doctors can test for in the body. And if there's inflammation going on in the body, so there's three things that cause heart disease. And when you have these three signs, chances are you're on the road to heart disease. So it's high blood sugar, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. If you've got those three things, you're definitely on the road to heart disease. So if those are issues in your life or people that you know, start looking at your lifestyle. Start looking at maybe things that you're eating and doing a cleanse to get your liver back on track. And then of course, elevated liver enzymes. When your enzymes are not balanced in your liver, it's telling you something's going on. So too much sugar in the diet can increase uh, your chances of getting um, fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic cirrhosis can happen when you have too much sugar in your diet. And I didn't know that, but it happened to me because I had something called candida. And the candida is that yeast in the body and it gives off a byproduct that is so toxic to the body that the liver will actually convert it to alcohol. It converts it to alcohol, so I was a walking, talking distillery, and I didn't know it. And it caused me to get fatty liver. So once I realized what it was, I cleansed my liver, I went back to the doctor, my liver enzymes were normal. So again, you can do, there's something you can do about it. You just need to know what to do about it. So number two is the gut. An increased yeast and bacteria, fungus, candida, parasites, all of these things can point to the fact that you've got an imbalanced gut. The happy hormone production, that serotonin, when that decreases, 80% of your serotonin is produced in your gut, not in your brain. But it is the hormone that makes you feel happy. So they're doing a lot of research on probiotics, which is that good bacteria, they're doing more and more research on probiotics to help with things like depression because they understand that the serotonin is being produced in the gut. Now signs and symptoms of issues in your gut would be gas, bloating, indigestion, so you're seeing food in your stool as well, heartburn. These are all signs that your gut's not balanced. Maybe you're getting diarrhea or constipation. These are all signs that your gut's not happy. Uh, decreased nutrient absorption. So this is a big one. We've never eaten more in our lives, in our society, but we've never been more nutritionally depleted because a lot of the food that we're eating doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it. Or we're cooking it so much that those live enzymes that are in our vegetables are dead by the time we eat it. So that's where digestive enzymes can help. That helps you digest your foods properly. Now gut inflammation is increased when all of these things are happening, you've got gut inflammation, you might end up with things like irritable bowel syndrome, uh, Crohn's, colitis. These are all signs that there's inflammation going on in the digestive tract. Digestive enzymes decrease, so your natural production, the ones that you make yourself, will start to decrease. So when that happens, there's a few things you can do. Chew your food really, really well before you swallow it. Don't drink when you eat, just take small sips and take digestive enzymes because they're going to help you break down your food properly. And then of course, if you're not paying attention to all of this stuff, it can lead to that leaky gut that I mentioned. And then of course, the leaky gut can lead to leaky brain. And when you have that leaky brain, you might be more prone to depression and Alzheimer's and dementia. So when you have toxins cross over the blood-brain barrier, 
then your, your brain is going to have to start dealing with that as well. And you might get brain fog. Um, and it increases your stress response. You're not able to deal with stress easily. And so your stress re response increases. You might get brain inflammation. And again, that leads to those things like the dementia and the Alzheimer's. So they're seeing this in these patients. They've got inflammation happening in their brain, just like you would have inflammation happening in your gut or anywhere else in the body. And then, of course, the decreased immune system. So your immune system is just not functioning properly because the signals aren't working properly in your brain. Which leads to decreased vagal activity. Now the vagus nerve is a nerve that goes from the back of your head and it goes throughout the body. It goes to some very, very important organs. So of course the first one being the liver, the stomach, the kidneys, and the gut, which was, would be the rest of the intestinal tract. So if you're having problems with your, this is me, this is what actually happened to me. I was having problems with my gut, I was peeing constantly, I didn't know what was going on, I wasn't making my digestive enzymes properly, and I thought, what is going on? And this happened only last year. But I'm in the industry, I know what I'm doing, I'm doing everything right, but this is still happening. And it was my vagus nerve, it wasn't working properly, it wasn't firing properly. So I went to my naturopath who helped me to deal with it. So one of the best things you can do is take bitters. That's going to stimulate your vagus nerve. Or gargling with water really, really loud. That helps to stimulate the nerve. So there's a few things you can you can look it up on Google of how to stimulate your, your vagus nerve because it's a very, very important nerve in your body. So where are excess toxins stored? So <laughs> okay. So when toxins come into the body, they're coming in through the lungs, the skin, and also through your gut, through your intestines. Everything, whether you eat it, breathe it, or drink it, is going to go through the liver. Now, I just did a, a bit more research today, so I'm going to explain a little bit about how important the liver is and how does the liver detoxify these toxins for you. So there's, there's two phases of detoxification. So phase one, um, what happens is the liver works to eliminate toxins through a very complex group of enzymes known as, known as cytochrome P450. And there's a whole bunch of different um, enzymes. There's about 50 to 100 enzymes that make up this cytochrome P450. And they all do a job, but they overlap so that it, it's going to ensure maximum detoxification. So toxins are neutralized and released into bile. They're made water soluble so the kidneys can excrete them. And when necessary, the toxins are converted into uh, a form, a more chemically active form called active intermediaries. Okay, so that's phase one. Then you go on to phase two. In phase two liver detoxification, it takes these active intermediaries and makes, makes it more toxic. So that's even worse for your body. So at first, that's what happens. And this is where it's very important to support the liver through its detoxification phases so it can go through these cycles more efficiently. So it needs to be eliminated promptly once these toxins are made. So fiber is really, really important to sweeping out toxins. So the active intermediaries are converted and then they're, uh, they're converted a second time where they're combined with mineral compounds, amino acids, and other biochemicals which are water soluble. So it's changing some of those some of those toxins from fat soluble to water soluble so that you can get it out through your kidneys and through your urine. So phase two liver detoxification works by six different mechanisms and involves what's called conjugation. I know this is a little more complicated, but I really wanted to, to let you guys understand what, how important the liver is. So toxic substances are, abs are bound to other substances within the body. And so things like uh, amino acids, glutathione, sulfur, acetyl coenzyme, so all of these things are bound to these things, and then they are eliminated through the body. So once they're bound, they can be safely eliminated at that point through the bladder, through the bile, and then through, through your colon. So phase two is required to detox medications, food additives, toxins from intestinal bacteria. They eliminate steroid hormones, estrogen, thyroid hormones, so that they don't overload the body. 
So I know that was a little complicated, but I did want you to understand how complicated detoxification is and how important the liver is to that process. So if the liver is not able to handle it, it should go out through the skin, the kidneys, the colon, and the lungs. If that doesn't happen, where does it go? The fat soluble toxins go into your fat cell, your bone marrow, your liver, and your central nervous system. And that's why a lot of people with Alzheimer's and um, Parkinson's, they show a lot of aluminum and heavy metals because they like the nervous system. Now if it's a water soluble toxin, they're going to go into the joints, the blood, the tissues, and the muscles. Which is why some people, they get a really achy, like their joints are always sore. It's because those water soluble toxins are hanging out in the joints. So some of the symptoms that might show up if someone is toxic is things like fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. And that could be directly related to that leaky gut I was telling you about, where those toxins are going into the bloodstream and the body is just constantly attacking and causing these autoimmune disorders. Allergies and sinus congestion. So if it's away from, you know, um, allergy season, I don't know if you guys get those seasons, but I know in Canada, when certain things come into bloom, some people get more allergies at certain times. But the allergies and sinus congestion could be because you're dealing with something that you're eating that is leaking into that leaky gut, getting into the bloodstream, and the body is causing the inflammation, it's causing you to sneeze, it's causing you to, to get all stuffy and stuff like that. So that's the allergies and sinus congestion. Maybe you've got IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, or digestive issues like constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating. So these are all signs that, that you've got some toxicity going on and you might want to deal with that. The pain and the inflammation, as I mentioned, could be in the joints, but any sign of inflammation in the body is not normal. We shouldn't be living in pain every day. So start paying attention to your body. What's it trying to tell you? Mood changes. So the liver makes hormones. It also detoxes hormones. And hormones really control a lot of our mood and how we get through each day. And some days are worse than others. And some days you have no patience for everything, for anything. So again, when that happens, for me personally, uh, I notice that when I start getting really irritated all the time, that's my liver talking and saying, okay, I'm not happy, you need to start working on my liver again. Uh, weight gain. Toxins are stored in your fat cells. So the fat soluble toxins are stored there. So what happens is the body is very, very smart. It doesn't want those toxins free flowing. So it puts it into fat cells and then it slows down your resting metabolic rate. It doesn't want them, you know, flowing around. But the other thing it does is that it's, um, it won't let you release those toxins. So it won't let you release the weight because it knows it's dangerous. So if someone has hit a plateau, if they're trying to lose weight, and they can't, it could be because they're toxic. The body says, no, 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 I'm trying to protect you, so let's just hold on to these toxins. <laughs> and so when you cleanse, you can get rid of that, and then you can start to lose the weight. Cardiovascular disease and respiratory problems, again, that goes back to that um, silent inflammation in the body, and when you've got toxins circulating through your bloodstream and going into the heart, these are all things that can cause this cardiovascular disease and respiratory problems. And then candida and parasites, they really do a lot of damage. They give off their own waste. They eat your food and they excrete waste in your body. They're little hijackers within you. So they do a lot of damage by giving off waste, but they physically do damage as well. So candida punctures your intestinal tract. It grows roots called rhizoids and they puncture your intestinal tract and parasites can actually just latch right onto your intestinal tract. So they can do a lot of damage and of course lead to further toxicity. Hormonal imbalance, as I mentioned already, liver, very much closely related to hormone production and detoxification. And hormone, again, related to skin issues. So if you're getting acne around your mouth, 
that is very much related to hormones. Especially if you're going through the cycles, like monthly cycles, I think ladies, a lot of us may have experienced it, that you get it every month. That's a hormone related thing. So, balance the liver. <laughs> you notice I keep saying the same thing over and over? Uh, food sensitivities, again, sign of toxicity. All of these things are getting into your bloodstream, shouldn't be there. Body's attacking it, causing the food sensitivities. Headaches and brain fog. I'd say that's almost number one. If someone is always getting headaches and they're always kind of spacey and they've got this brain fog, I always think this person needs to cleanse. And again, back to the liver. Okay? <laughs> so there's general ways of cleansing. First one could be whole colon hydrotherapy. If someone has had long-term constipation for a long time, this would, could be a good way of learning. This could be a good way to get things started, to get things moving through the intestinal tract. You could do a sauna or a steam bath. What a nice, relaxing way to detoxify. This is my favorite way to detoxify. Because your skin is your largest organ in your body. And so we absorb things into our skin, but we also detoxify through our skin. So doing a sauna and a steam bath is great. Lymphatic massage is something that helps to get the lymph flow going. So our blood uses the heart as a pump, but the lymphatic system uses movement. So exercise. Exercise is very good for the lymphatic system. Okay, so get that lymph flow going. And dry skin brushing, or you, you do scraping here. What dry skin brushing is, is, it's a dry brush and you brush up towards your heart. So your arms and your legs, your stomach and everything, and you brush it up towards the heart because the lymphatic system is a one-way valve system. So you want to be working it up towards the heart, which is where that system works toward. And the same, it's the same idea with scraping. Okay, it's just done in a little bit of a different way. Uh, exercise, of course it's good for absolutely everything. It increases the, the production of your, of your endorphins, it makes you feel good, but it also helps you get rid of the toxins. Okay, you're sweating it out, you're moving the lymph system around. So it's very, very important to exercise. Green juicing. I didn't say juicing because a lot of people think, oh, great juice, I love like mango juice or something. <laughs> There's a lot of sugar in that juice. And sugar is also toxic to the body. Sugar is a poison to the body. So most of us, I think, in this day and age, have way too much sugar in our diet. So green juicing is important. And this is where spirulina is good too. So the green juicing is going to get all of those good nutrients. And I did mention fiber. Make sure you're getting enough fiber in the day. So if you're juicing, you're not keeping in the fiber. So the fiber is important to help soak up and sweep out toxins. And if you're eating a whole food, the fiber's right in there with it. Mother Nature's packaged it perfectly. But if you're juicing, you need to add that fiber. And then, of course, the reason we're here is the herbal detoxification kits. So how can cleansing kits help? First of all, they're really, really convenient. They're easy to take. So they help increase bile production in the liver. And what the bile does is it takes those toxins out, stores it in the gallbladder, and then your body will get rid of it. It also increases peristalsis and hydration. So peristalsis is the natural muscular movement of your colon. So it's going to help increase that action. It's going to hydrate the colon, and it's going to help to flush things out. It helps to increase urine output, so those water-soluble toxins are able to be released through the body. It increases the blood and lymphatic circulation, so the blood brings good nutrients into your cells, but it also removes toxic waste, and so does the lymphatic system. It gets rid of a lot of those poisons in your body, so it increases those, the production of both of them. Uh, mucus discharge from the lung will, lungs will increase, so when people start doing a cleanse, the full body cleanse, they might notice that they start coughing a little more, and that's normal. It's because your body's trying to get rid of those toxins that your, your lungs are starting to excrete. So it's actually a good thing. And then a decrease in pathogens. So the candida, the parasites, and all of the byproducts that they give off in the body. And then, of course, reduce fat deposits in the liver and the fatty tissues. So there's two unique formulations. 
and Elkin has worked with a detoxification expert to develop two sets. So it's a comprehensive detoxification program, and they work synergistically together. So it's important that you do do both of them on a regular basis. So the first one is the DT detoxification set, and the other one is the LV detoxification, or sorry, it's a liver protection set, sorry, it's a liver protection set. So they both do slightly different things. So the first one, the DT set, is three steps. So the first step, the first step, you take in the morning on an empty stomach, and it helps to get rid of the toxins in your organs. The second part, you take in the middle of the day, and that's the fiber. That's going to help to soak up and sweep out the toxins out of your body. And part three, you take after your dinner. So that's the one that you take at dinner, and it's going to help with the colon. It's going to help you to eliminate things through the colon. So these are taken every day until the kit is finished. So it's a complete detoxification program. It works on the liver, lungs, colon, kidneys, skin, blood, and lymphatic system. So for the liver, it's got ingredients that act as a colico. And what that does is it prom promotes the discharge of bile, and that stimulates bile flow. And that gets rid of those toxins. It also has ingredients that protect the liver cells, which is really important, especially during detoxification. For the kidneys, it's got ingredients that's going to help increase urine flow. Very important as you're, you're getting rid of these toxins. It's got ingredients that promote mucus secretion and discharge from the lungs. It's got ingredients to help increase the peristalsis, that natural muscular movement. It soothes the intestinal walls and it also relieves stomach bloat. In the skin portion, it's got ingredients that help to induce sweating, so getting those toxins out through your skin. The blood has ingredients to enhance blood detoxification, and for the lymphatics, it's got uh, ingredients to promote lymphatic circulation. So all of the ingredients have been chosen to work together, and they're proven, sorry, they're proven by research. So they know these herbs work for these things, so they've been formulated together to work together to work on the entire body. So you would start off with that one. It's 14 days. It's convenient, you know? And if you're someone who cannot remember to take your capsules, I used to be one of those people. So in the morning on an empty stomach, my stomach was empty when I brushed my teeth. So I would put it there with my toothbrush. And then at lunch, I would have my fiber, so I would bring it to work with me. Because we have a three full body, uh, we have a full body cleanse in Canada too. And then the last part, I would put next to where I would be making my supper. Dinner, sorry, dinner. You guys have two in my family here today. In Canada, we call it dinner and supper, it's the same thing. So after your dinner, uh, so put it next to where you might be preparing your dinner, or if you're going out for dinner, put it in your bag. So it's pretty easy to take, and it works really well. But then to keep it going, to keep that liver working optimally, is what you would do the 30-day liver care program. And this is the LV set. And this one protects healthy liver function, supports all phases of liver detoxification, and also assists with toxin elimination. So this is something that you would take ongoing. So you would take this for three months, and then you would go back on to the DT set again. So this is something you do every day to support that liver that's doing over 500 functions for you. So phase one is the detoxification. Phase two is the neutralization and the conjugation of these toxic um, substances that we're dealing with. So it neutralizes molecules to create harmless and water-soluble uh, substances. And then part three is elimination. So that's going to help eliminate these water-soluble substances, eliminated through the body, through either the urine or the feces. Okay. So that is the LV set. So this is something that you would stay on every day. So the first part, it's a two-part kit for this one. The first part you take before you have your breath. No, sorry. Empty stomach. Empty stomach. So again, put it next to your toothbrush. And the second part you have with your dinner. You have after your dinner, I should say. 
So it's similar to the first one, except in the first one, you've got the fiber in the middle. So it's still taken the same way. So you're in that habit already. So just keep, keep, keep on going, but it's just a different product. <clears throat> so protect, eliminate, and support with the L LB Fens and the LB Cleanse and the LB Set. So that's what both parts do. So start off 14 days comprehensive detoxification program. You want to start off with that because you want to get all of those organs of elimination working together so that when your liver is getting rid of the toxins that it's dealing with, all of the other organs of elimination are cooperating. So it's going to be a little easier. So if you listen to your body when it whispers, you won't have to hear it scream. So pay attention. What is your body trying to tell you? Pay attention to those little symptoms. If you're having problems every time you eat a certain food, I used to keep a food diary, and I would do it for a couple of weeks. How did I feel when I ate certain foods or when I did certain things? And then I was able to start listening to my body and start paying attention. And now I'm really hypersensitive to what it's telling me. And I can make the shifts. You can make the changes pretty easily. So that is the end.